This is the ITV Evening News with Mary Nightingale. Good evening. After seven long weeks of perhaps the hardest lockdown yet, the Prime Minister today set out in detail his plan for how and when it will be lifted in England. There will be four stages, with the first seeing all of England's schools fully reopen from Monday, March the 8th. Every five weeks, a new phase will come into force, eventually leading to the lifting of all social restrictions by June the 21st. But what Boris Johnson called a one-way road to freedom is dependent on the virus being kept under control. He warned the threat remains substantial and that easing lockdown will see more deaths. The latest data reveals 10,641 new UK cases and 178 further deaths. 17.7 million people have now had their first vaccine, with scientists hailing its spectacular impact on serious illness. And we will get more on that in just a moment. First, here's our political editor, Robert Peston, on the Prime Minister's exit plan. A city, Leicester, that's been locked down longer than almost any other place in the country. So its people, like everyone in England, were desperate to hear his plan for driving us back to something that feels like normal life. With your permission, I will make a statement on the roadmap that will guide us cautiously but irreversibly towards reclaiming our freedoms while doing all we can to protect our people against Covid. But on this auspicious day, he started with a warning. We cannot escape the fact that lifting lockdown will result in more cases, more hospitalisations and, sadly, more deaths. And this would happen whenever lockdown is lifted. There is therefore no credible route to a zero Covid Britain or indeed a zero Covid world. And we cannot persist indefinitely with restrictions that debilitate our economy, our physical and mental well-being and the life chances of our children. The roadmap back to freedom in England has four stages five weeks apart. The first part of stage one on the 8th of March sees all children back at school, though with secondary school students wearing face masks in the classroom. And you'll be able to meet a friend outdoors to socialise rather than just exercise. Then in stage one part two, six people or two households will be able to meet outside, including in a private garden and outdoor sports such as football and tennis will start again. In stage two, no earlier than April the 12th, non-essential shops, hairdressers, libraries and museums will reopen and you'll be able to sit outside to eat and drink in pubs and restaurants so long as you're in groups of six or a table of just two households. Also, gyms and swimming pools will reopen. You'll be able to go to a self-catering holiday cottage. Up to 15 people can attend a wedding and 30 a funeral. In stage three, no earlier than the 17th of May, you can gather outdoors in groups of up to 30 and the two-household or six-person rule will extend to mixing indoors. Restaurants and pubs will be able to serve indoors. Hotels will open. And subject to limits on numbers, cinemas, theatres, sporting venues and children's play areas will open. In theory, Freedom Day is stage four on the 21st of June, when there should no longer be limits on social contact, larger concerts and sporting events should resume, and even nightclubs will reopen. But remember, all these dates could be delayed if new data shows the vaccines aren't working as they should. And the Prime Minister also announced four reviews, including into whether we'll need face masks forever, whether we should show proof we've had a test or vaccine before going to a pub, and how we can travel abroad again one day. Today, the, really is, the, the end really is in sight, Mr Speaker. And a wretched year will give way to a spring and a summer that will be very different and incomparably better than the picture we see around us today. Labour's leader was broadly supportive, except for one thing. Health restrictions must be accompanied by proper economic support. And it makes no sense to announce today that businesses will be closed for many more weeks or months without announcing new economic support at the same time. There was more unhappiness on the PM's own benches, with this former chief whip saying that vaccination should allow lockdown to end much earlier. From the end of April, at the latest, are, are, is there any need for restrictions to continue? Another slow day in Leicester. And the reason, the PM says, the journey to freedom must be a slow trudge is because the last thing he wants, any of us want, is a fourth lockdown. Robert Peston, ITV News. That's it for now. Julie's here with news at 10, but from me and all the team, uh, stay safe, stay well, and for a little while longer, stay at home. Bye-bye.